I have a brand new machine to show you today here at Lieb here. It is a machine that has not yet been released, but they've been so kind to show us a preview of what's happening inside the machine. I got both Toby and Thomas waiting for us up there. And the first thing I notice is that there's two spindles inside, but I wanna get you closer to the action. So I invite you to come up with me and join Thomas and Toby to learn a bit more about this machine. And if I'm being honest, there is so many attributes about this machine that there might be a chance that I forget some of these things, but I'm gonna do my best. That's how amazing this machine is. Thomas, Toby, thank you so much for being here. Incredibly excited to showcase this machine, which has never before been seen. All right, let's start with what is easy to see and which I've never seen before, which is the two spindles right here. Toby, I think that you're gonna be the expert on this topic, right? So let's talk about the two wheels that I see there and the two spindles. Yes, right. We have here two spindles, um, one spindle for roughing, one spindle for final uh, um, grinding. Um, you also can produce um, the whole process in one time, in one, um, one setup. In one setup to, uh, first of all, to rough the gear and after that, on the um, same setup uh, to final um, grinding the, the gear with the final disc. You know, I'm already hearing from you, Toby, as I look at this and hear the description, I'm hearing reduced cycle times. I'm hearing because I have two spindles, maybe I don't have to move the part anymore to a separate machine. There's so many benefits to this area. But I notice a piece here as well, Toby. Does this have any significance? It looks shiny. Yeah, that's a dresser. And so we have two spindles for the dresser. There is a hydromandrel in, on the machine where you put on the dresser and you fix by only one screw the dresser on that spindle. And the run out is within one to two microns, which is absolutely necessary for the operation as a dressing. There is another important feature to mention. Both spindles are used simultaneously. That means you can reduce your non-productive time when you use that machine. Imagine you have a lot of material to remove. That means a lot of passes. After X passes, we have to dress the wheel. And because of the simultaneous dressing, we save time on the gear. There's another thing very important. Next to the wheels, you see that probe. The probe is a scanning sensor where we can use on the machine for onboard inspection. For example, you rough a part and you want to make sure that you are close to, the, to, to your final geometry. Then you start onboard inspection on your machine. You get the, the, the graph of your part on the screen. You get also a proposal in the case you have to change something, to adjust something, maybe the profile angle or the crown or the lead or whatever. Then you get a proposal on the machine and then you can start finishing on the second wheel. But Toby told me he could actually lift this up so it wasn't a problem. He could lift it with his muscles. Obviously a joke, a bad joke, because I didn't see you laugh, but a bad joke. Being able to measure within the machine saves so many headaches. I can only imagine what it would have been like to take a part out, measure the part, find something wrong, having to put it back in again. Measuring to me is, this is maybe one of the most important components of this machine, I think. I mean, that is, that is I mean, I don't know if I have enough words to describe the importance here. But Thomas, I'm also seeing something in the, in the setup. I've seen what happens when a wheel is out of balance or a wheel is not precise, whether it's going left to right or up and down, bouncing around. I've seen what happens in my car when my tire is not set correctly. And sometimes that takes time, but you guys have figured out a way to reduce that overall setup time, haven't you? Exactly. So we have here the wheels already placed on a flange by this number of screws which you see here on conventional machines often 
you put your wheel on the spindle and then you have to tighten all that six or eight screws manually. We do this outside of the machine and then bring the wheel with the flange into the machine, put it on the, on the spindle and only tighten one screw in the center because we have this HSK interface. That means we have the perfect fit or sit of the wheel on the disc, on the, on the, uh, on the spindle, on the and then we reduce the balancing time because we have for sure automatic balancing in both spindles. And then also for the first dressing of your wheel in the machine, it's much easier and shorter because the removal of the material is reduced instead of, as you said, when you have a bumpy wheel, mm -hmm. you, you, you have much more to do on the dresser tool life of the dresser, wheel life because of losing material on your grinding wheel. Important what you mentioned is the handling. Yeah, This very, very heavy parts here. We have a hydrostatic table. That means we can load up up to 15 tons of workpiece together with fixture. That's important for all that kind of gears you might do on that machine industrial transmission gears, wind power energy gears. Also for the setup of the machine, it's good to have circul circulation of oil and we have in the machine bed a circuit of oil all the time ongoing because of thermal stability of the machine. We talk about runouts of 20 to 30 microns on the final gear. So the machine has to stay really precise and exact. We have also this direct driven table, which is good, first of all, for the precise cutting of the gear, for the inspection, for the onboard inspection, and for sure for all other purposes to set up the part to get it on a, in, good, in a good shape on your, on your machine. Last but not least, not to forget, we have the nozzle system. You know, from grinding, usually if you go for this high speed grinding, it's important to have an optimal coolant flow. Otherwise, we get this overheating of the, of the gear flanks. Overheating of the gear flanks is something, it's a no-go area for everybody in the world because the transmission have to last very long. Think about the huge towers of the wind energy, where you put the gearbox on. So the nozzle system, we have the NC-driven axis. That means if we dress down the wheel, the nozzle will follow the diameter exactly. And for the setup, also important is we have an insert in the, in the nozzle. That means you have two or three or four jobs you do every day or every week. So for each of the jobs, you have a defined nozzle system which keeps exactly the form of the, of the flow of the oil for each gear. Yeah? Then you only exchange that insert which keeps down your setup time. Because time is money, as we know all. So a fast setup is it in terms of the wheels, in terms of the nozzle, in terms of the dresser, in terms of the part is important for efficiency no, for, for costs of your machine. This is, it's all fascinating. And, and I can tell that you guys have been around a long time because you're, you're thinking of all the answers before the questions are even asked. You know, we started with two spindles. I hadn't seen that before. You're making sure that the coolant is there so your part doesn't overheat. You're making sure the measuring is there so Toby doesn't have to pick all the parts up by hand like he's been doing. That's why he has these big muscles. You're talking about the coolant flow so the coolant stays the same temperature the entire time you're machining. And you mentioned a hydrostatic bed. Hydrostatic bed is important to understand, my friends, because that means nothing breaks down. It means when these guys are talking about their machine will last for decades, as I was just talking to another friend of theirs, and they had a phone call from a machine, a company that had a machine of four and a half decades still running. That's what components like this do. They don't break down. And like you said, Thomas, these components have to last when we think about clean energy, you think about the wind turbines. I couldn't imagine how much money it costs if this thing breaks down every year. 
how much change and time and results. Now, we've talked about all this, and there's a lot going on. I mean, let's be honest. All of the components, there's a lot going on. I feel like back in my programming days, I had to do everything line by line, Toby, with a floppy disk in the back. I can already see here, this is user friendly and it looks a lot like my smartphone or my smart tablet, ready to be, I guess, I guess acclimated in anyone's machine shop, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, you have here our new um, software, software surface. It's very easy to program and to understand. Um, for example, you have here the icon workpiece. You go inside, all what you see is here the gear data. Um, as well, you have here to program the module, the pressure angle, the tip diameters. As well, you have here the graphic to see what we have. Also, um, to see an info point. When you need more information about that, um, for example, the profile, when you um, program here growing for a profile growing, you see it um, instead of the, um, the profile lead. So there's a lot of support for the operator when he is programming his, his gear. Yeah? You can imagine such a gear with 20 microns run out is not only three different numbers. It's a hell of data we have to keep in mind. Exactly right. And that's, that's what I think of as well when I think about the brains of the operation. You know, we, we brag about the mechanical yeah, side yeah, of things yes. all the time. We get excited about it. The audience does as well. And this has to work. Yes. But if this doesn't work to go along with it, and if it's not simple to use, mm -hmm. people aren't using it. So you are making it simple. And something else I'd like to bring up, Toby, and to go along with this, Thomas, is to my understanding, you are kind of, here at Leap here, a kind of a one-stop shop in the world of, of gear making, right? So if I have a software that's similar to the next machine, that's similar to the next machine, my operators know how to run each of the machines instead of having three or four different machines. You guys have the capability, people can come here, invest in your products, and make sure that they're familiar with one interface, and that's friendly yes. as well. Mm, yes, sure, yeah. You have the same surface, the same software in each other machines, Hopping machine, grinding machine, shaping machine, it's all the same, the same program, the same uh, process. HMI. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, perfect. Well, I think this summarizes. I, I honestly think I could probably hang out here all day long and talk more. The details continue. I think we covered a lot of it, but if you have questions, these two guys, Thomas and Toby, are happy to help you. So leave it in the comments. Give Lee Bear a call. Give them an email, visit their website. I'm not sure if this is there yet. This is a secret just for you. But if you visit us at Emo, you can find it there as well and ask these guys questions in person. Gentlemen, thank you so thank much you. for your time today. Appreciate your time. Thanks, you and thank you all for watching. Let us know if you have any questions. We're happy to help.